All right, Mad Dog 2001. I'm going to record this again since uh, I think I lost internet connection in the middle of the video. This is a uh, top ten pitchers and Cardinals history over the last 15 years. And this cri this criteria is you had to have pitched for St. Louis for uh, three years or pitched into a third year. In you know what I mean, like. You could have started the year, like you pitched two full seasons and then uh, started the third year, either you got traded or something happened, you know, something like that, or you were traded from a previous year, that, that would count too. Also, I took playoffs into consideration on this list too. Uh, some guys are ranked higher than others that maybe regular season numbers weren't as good or were better than the other guy, but the other guy was like very good in the postseason. And uh, also on this list is uh, it was tough to get 10 starting pitchers. Uh, I was able to really get nine on this list that were, like, good. And then after that, it was, it was pretty much tough. So when I get to number 10, obviously you will see that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all i got to say about that. All right, moving on. Number 10 is Jake Westbrook. And like I said earlier... Yeah, Jake Westbrook was bad, but it was really between him, Andy Bennis, who wasn't very good at all, uh, and he doesn't fit the criteria because he pitched in the late 90s, uh, Jason Marquis, who was just fucking awful, and I think that was really it that I could really, I could put, find when I was looking at, online, just trying to remember maybe some pictures I was forgetting about. If I forgot about someone, please post a comment, you know, since no one does that anyways on my vids. So we'll move on. Westbrook was awful. So, I mean, he well, he was, like, okay here and there, but he wasn't very good at all. Uh, he should never have gotten that three-year extension when they signed him. That was just fucking stupid. And he was absolute liability every time he took the help. Number nine, Jaime Garcia. Jaime Garcia... Came in the league and was on fire. This guy had the potential to be a frontline starter for the Cardinals in the very in the very near future. Uh, he was he was pitched alongside of Carpenter and Wainwright in 2010, and that's when he was that's when he was brought up and pretty much excelled in that in that role as the number three starter for a while there. Uh, Injuries kind of plagued him. He wasn't able to finish full years here and there. Uh, I think he got hurt in 2012, 2013. Last year he got hurt. So, I mean, like, and he's he's had at least, I think, two Tommy Johns or some form of Tommy John. I know he's had at least one, and that happened when he was in the minor leagues. So, if it wasn't for the injuries, he probably would have been ranked a lot higher on this list. But, you know... That's injuries are part of baseball. Ah, sorry about that. Number eight, Kyle Loesch. Uh, I don't like Kyle Loesch. I've been very vocal, especially on here, about how I don't like Kyle Loesch as a pitcher, and I was happy when he was gone. Uh, but numbers don't lie. He was pretty solid in St. Louis. Uh, the guy. He was very solid. The, the only problem with him was postseason. He just, like, either he wasn't on the roster or in 2011 he was just awful. So I, I, it's, it's tough to really, like, talk crap. But definitely St. Louis was his best fit. He didn't really pitch very well anywhere else. That's including Milwaukee. He's in the bullpen now. But... Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. And that's great preparation. You know, it's funny because I recorded this video twice and I still can't come up with anything good about Kyle Walsh. Number seven. And this is Daryl Kyle. And Daryl Kyle, in my opinion, could have been like this team's like ace going forward. And unfortunately, he uh, died in 2002 part of the roster, and just had a really short career in St. Louis. Uh, 
he pitched in Houston before. He pitched in Colorado. But, like, his time in St. Louis, uh, he was very well liked. Uh, I was a huge fan. I was, I think, in seventh grade when he died. And it kind of sucked because it, I think it really hurt the, uh, and this might, I, and I'm moving on from it, but it really, it really hurt the season. And in 2002, St. Louis was probably the best team in the National League as far as, like, player-wise and how they were playing. They made that trade for Scott Rowland, and they were really going for it. And, you know, his death was during a time where they were really, really hot. And they were able to kind of scrape their way to the playoffs, but I think with his death, it just kind of, like, it wore the team down, and I don't think they were just all there for the postseason. They seemed mentally tired. <laughs> That's really retarded. Mentally just not there for the Giants as they as they lost uh, four games to one against the Giants. And Barry Bonds was just a fucking beast that year. He won the MVP, of course. All right, moving on. Number six is Woody Williams. Woody Williams was another pitcher that was pretty good. He's similar to some of the other guys on the list. Uh, I would say that his best years were... Again, here in St. Louis, he played in San Diego. He's been around a little bit. I think he might have had a little stint in San Francisco. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. But uh, he's bounced around a little bit. Uh, in 2002, he won 18 games and was a Cy Young candidate. Obviously, didn't win the award. And, uh, yeah, he's a good pitcher. I mean, there's not much, just nothing else really to say about him. He was here from 2001 to 2004. And uh, 04 was probably his worst year, but he was still uh, his ERA was low, but I think he was like 11 and 14 or something like that. So we're moving on. Number five is Lance Lynn, and Lance Lynn, uh, one out of the three Cardinals on this list that are still on the roster, which is saying something about this team that they have three top ten pitchers on the same team for the over the last 15 years. Lance Lynn uh, has. He's, it just seems like the guy gets better and better each year he plays. And he's only he's pretty much only has one pitch, and it's a fastball. And fast the fastball in general is the best pitch in baseball if you can locate it, and he does very good at that. He can throw it all four corners of the strike zone. He puts can, he can put a little spin on it, uh, slow it down a little bit. He throws it at like four or five different speeds. Then he can throw it at like 88, 89, 90, 91, and I think even like 93, 94 in that range. But he can he varies the speed of it, and uh, he throws like a four seamer or a two seamer, a cutter, uh, a splitter. They're all just variations of the same pitch, and yeah, I mean we'll see how Lance Lynn does. But his biggest problem is can he put together a really good season and then deuce and put it together in the postseason as well, and he hasn't done that yet. Number four, speaking of postseason, is Jeff Supon. And uh, Jeff Supon pitched during a time where the where the hitters were really, really good and or the, the ball was a lot more livened or livened up or however they want to post it as. But his ERAs were always like the mid-threes. But he played here three years. He won 15 games in all three years, and he pitched uh, in the postseason better than probably any of these Cardinals starters. And that's saying something, uh, considering the St. Louis Cardinals have won two World Series in the last 15 years. But uh, Jeff Supon pitched in Game 7 of the 2004 NLCS. He pitched in Game 7 of the 2006 NLCS. And I think he pitched in the game that they won against the Astros in Game 6. Don't quote me on that one. That one I don't know. I don't have any of the stats in front of me. All I got is the list that I wrote down. And that's really it. That's why I'm looking at it. Uh, Supon played from 04 to 06. And then uh, they let him go. And the Brewers signed him to a ridiculous contract. And they paid for it. I mean, he just wasn't as good. He was, I think he was okay the first year, and that was pretty much it. Uh, number three is Matt Morris. Matt Morris is was pretty much the ace of the team for the first five years of the, of the 2000 decade. Uh, from 99 to 2004, 
he was pretty much the guy. He, uh, and with that, I think that's enough to put him at number three. I did not look up his, like, stats. I probably should have, but I didn't. I know he was really good. I think I think he had a couple. I know he had at least one 20-win season. He probably had more. Uh, I know his win-loss record is very good, and he was nominated for the Cardinal Hall of Fame last year. He didn't make it, but he was he was on the nomination, so he has to be, like, really good. I didn't... I watched him pitch as a kid, and of course I would imitate his uh, his uh, his wind up and all that kind of stuff. So there's probably a little nostalgic fact to it that I like Matt Morris. Uh, so we'll move on from there. Uh, number two is uh, Adam Wainwright, and uh, yeah, there's no surprise there. Adam Wainwright will probably I don't know, but. As if he keeps pitching, obviously, he could have a potential to pass up number one on this list. But Adam Wainwright came up and uh, was traded here in 2004 for J.D. Drew and Eli Marrero. And then he, wa he was brought up in 2006 where he was, the, he was put in the closer role with no experience closing ever in the minor leagues or in any... He's never pitched out of the bullpen pretty much his whole life. And he was said they pretty much told him, "Okay, kid, you're closing. Isryhausen's hurt." And he was he was like, "All right." So he goes in, starts pitching, does very he does very well in that role, and wins the World Series because of it. Uh, probably his biggest moment that year was striking out Carlos Beltran in Game Seven of the NLCS, which was a huge surprise. And when the Mets had the bases loaded with uh, with two outs, and Carlos Beltran comes to the plate, and I'm like, God, fuck, this series is over. And it wasn't. Adam Wainwright was able to get him out on three straight pitches and struck him out. And uh, Beltran was caught looking on that really nasty curveball he threw him. <sighs> Number one is obviously Chris Carpenter. And Chris Carpenter has been is the best cardinal pitcher of this generation. He is one of the best ones in franchise history. He's not the best obviously with this franchise being so old, but he is one of the best. And he's won 11 postseason games. He's pitched in two World Series. He won both of them. Uh, there's not much this guy hasn't done. He's very clutch. His Game 5 performance in 2011 was ridiculous. He In 2011, Adam Wainwright goes down at the beginning of the year, and Chris Carpenter puts the team on his back and just goes out there, kind of struggles for the year. He has probably one of the worst years he's had in years past. But postseason comes, and he just turns it on. This guy is team leader. Uh, they they listen to the guys have all listened to him. He teaches guys. I mean, there's nothing this guy can't do. He's very animated on the mound. He's a throwback kind of player, similar to how Gibson, when he pitched. And it was just it's it was just really fun watching him pitch. He was my favorite to watch. Uh, 2011, I don't think I missed a Carpenter start. I had that MLB TV package, and I made sure I watched every Chris Carpenter start because I knew it. I knew it was going to come to an end at one point, and I didn't want to. I didn't. I wanted to be there for the ride, and thank God I was. And 2011 was such a fun year. 06, he pitched that game two of the World Series, and that was just or game four or game three of the World Series. We only threw like 88 pitches and won the game with eight innings of work. And then of course Adam Wainwright saved it. Uh, yeah. So, Carpenter, Wainwright, top two, that's very good. Morris at three. And after that, the rest of it's pretty debatable. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below, even though no one will comment and probably only like five of you will watch this. This is Mad Dog 2001. And I will make probably another video for the next few days of the top ten worst starting pitchers. I also got a top 32 quarterback list that me and my friend are going to do, and uh, we decided that we weren't going to actually make the list before the video and actually make the list during the video, so look out for that. Anyways, Mad Dog 2001, I'm out.